Good afternoon and welcome to NYFP. In midweek and midday trade, the major U.S. stock averages continue to trade in the red. Joining me this afternoon is Brian Barnier of Value Bridge Advisors, and we will be talking about preparing your portfolio for tapering. Brian, good afternoon. Thanks for joining me today. Glad to be here. Well, here on the trading floor, we're keeping an eye on equity averages. The Dow, Nasdaq, and S&P 500, they're all down for the third consecutive session in a row. But we have to keep in mind this does come on the heels of record highs for the Dow and S&P 500. And given that we're seeing light trading conditions here in the market, it's all about Fed speeches this week and expectations of when the Fed will be tapering. So given that we got the jobs report last week and the second quarter preliminary GDP figures from the U.S., what are you seeing in the data points? So we have all this data and it's really rather confusing, but let's simplify for a bit. Let's imagine we're just an individual person in a little town. And so this guy is going to the store and he's making his purchases in his little rural town. So it's sort of an isolated world. And you know what? He's really spending pretty well. If you look at what he's spending relative to his disposable personal income, he's back to pre-crash levels. And that's a pretty good thing. But he's doing that with a lot higher debt than he had. But here's the other thing. That person's got to work, right? And so when they're getting wages from that store, the guy looks at his cash register and says, you know, how many hours can I have you work? And wages and salaries as a percent of the business revenue has been steadily falling for decades. And that, combined with everything else, is putting a big damper on where the consumer is, is working out. And when you take those two factors and put them together, you see that we're on the end of about a 10-year decline combined with just a little bit of an uptick because right now in the last few quarters consumers are spending relatively more compared to their disposable income. So it's a little bit more confidence but it's still kind of scary because of the debt and the big picture. And Brian, you bring up a lot of important points there. Uh, we say it's all about jobs when it comes to the timing of uh, Fed tapering and when that unwinding will begin. But of course, it also affects the consumer. So in terms of investor behavior, what are we seeing? So on the investor side, the big thing to look for there is what the flows are. Uh, we talk about households and the nonprofit serving households and how much they're investing in stocks and bonds. So look at both together. And what we've seen in the last number of years is a far more erratic pattern than we had seen in the decades before. And that most of that spikes has been Fed driven. So we're seeing some fear, uncertainty, and doubt amongst the people. And we're seeing this heavy reliance, but just on the Fed announcement spikes, not over time, which is one of the things that has to be weighing on the Fed as they're considering tapering. And before uh, we talk more about the uh, Federal Reserve and some of the chatter that we've been hearing from the Fed officials, I do want to get your take on those uh, GDP revisions. Now, last week, uh, we did get some uh, revisions, and we also saw something called the knowledge economy being uh, added to their revisions. Mm -hmm. And given that we also saw the U.S. trade deficit a narrow more than expected earlier this week, and we saw exports uh, surge more than expected, mm -hmm. what do the latest uh, revisions as well as data points uh, tell you? about growth in this country? Sure. Well, there's a, a couple things that were going on in those revisions. A big one was uh, accounting for pensions and annuities that affected some numbers. But the bigger one, the new one, was the knowledge economy point that she mentioned. And there, the GDP uh, for this new research and development category, a subset of intellectual property, has been going up nicely since the beginning of accounting. But since 2007, it started to flatten out. And so when we're looking at that R&D to drive innovation, and especially that discontinuous and systematic innovation, that's a kind of scary number to see it losing steam. And indeed, the revisions uh, last week do paint a rosier picture for the U.S. economy. And before we wrap it up, I do want to get your take on this uh, term you use, Fed fracking. So what are we seeing and what does it mean in terms of equity investors? Right. So a lot of what's going on, like the speeches we've seen and all this kind of noise out there, on the Fed's part, I almost wonder if it is sort of fracking, drilling test holes into the economy, into the market strain where the bubble is way above the fundamentals to find out how the market is going to react and testing this over time. We'll see more Jackson Hole. You're seeing this around the who will be chairman kind of thing. And so we've got to be careful about separating that sort of noise and that market testing to get the communication cycle going, which Chairman Bernanke is so important about, from what you really do to prepare your portfolio for the tapering. A lot of important points there, uh, Brian, and given that we do get Jackson Hole as well as the jobs report for the next, until the next uh, Fed meeting, those are important points to consider. So thank you so much for your insight as well as analysis today. Thank you.